This is question four of the 2019 Ordinary Level Leave and Serve paper. You can find a link to an image of this question in the description below. As you can see, it's a question with a square and a circle inside it, but it's all about coordinate geometry. So there's four parts to it. Each is gonna ask us a different part of coordinate geometry. I've done my best to draw a circle and a square on the board. Hopefully it's accurate enough for us to use. And uh, here it is here with these uh, three points, uh, minus four, 11 plus 4, 17, and plus 2, plus 3. Uh, the first question asks us to find the point Q. That's Q is over here. They're basically the edge of the square that we don't know. So how do we do that? This, a lot of students get uh, confused by a uh, question like this. Because, especially even good students get confused by this, because there is a hard way to do this. There's a very complicated way involving lots of square circles that involves lots of work. But it's not how we do this, it's not how you should think of doing this. There's a much simpler way. We think about the square and how the square is actually a parallelogram. So a square is actually just a parallelogram where all sides are equal. All of these are parallel. This is going the same angle, but it's also the same length. What the, why that's important is to get from this point to this point. Let me write that down here actually. Minus 4, 11. To get from minus 4, 11 all the way to 4, 17, must be the same way 2, 3 gets all the way to this Q. So this must go the same path. It must go the same direction and the same length. It must move the same X and the same Y as this guy here. So let's see how much this X and Y moves. How much does minus 4 move to get 4? Well, it has to move 8. It has to go up 8, plus 8. Let's write that as an 8 here. This is actually using vectors. You don't need to know too much about this. You don't even have to write it the way I'm writing it. Just recognize that the x is moving 8. And what's the y doing? The y is moving 6 plus 6. It's going up 6. So 6 plus a positive 6 we'll put in there. If um, this point, I don't have the letters, I'm sorry. This is uh, s and or. If s moves to or this way, well then P must move to Q the same way. So the same eight and six can be wrote here. Now you don't have to write any of this out. This is all could be done in your head if you're quite good at it. So the X moves again, it moves eight, just like the minus four moved eight. This two here must move eight. So we get to 10. That's two plus eight. The Y has to move six. The three has to move six. Three plus six is nine. So that's our answer there for part A. Let me just rub this out and I'll put in this number here. 10, 9, I believe is the answer. Hopefully I don't forget that. Um, let's put it in up here. 10, 9. And we'll have room to do part B. Part B asks us to find the coordinates of the center of C. C being the circle here. Find this coordinates here. So how do we do that? Again, there's no, no complicated equation about it. We just have to use our, our brains here a little. It's halfway between the, the corners of this square. So although they're asking us for the center of the circle, what we're really going to look for is the center of the square. So forget the square, forget the circles there. We're just, oh, that's not a square. We're just going to think of this square here. The center is these diagonals. Half, that's a terrible drawing, by the way. My apologies. Um, yeah, that's a terrible drawing. But halfway along these diagonals, halfway between here and here is the center of that circle. And we do have a formula for that. It's from our, from our tables books. I'll put that on the screen right now. Um, all the formulas, um, and I'll zoom in then, I guess, on the, the formula for the midpoint of a line. Right, back to the board. Let me jot the midpoint down. We'll put it down as x, y is equal to, so this is the midpoint, the point we're looking for, x, y here. That's equal to, well, let me just put the formula down that you would have just seen on the board. Um, x1 plus x2 over 2. And y1 plus y2 over 2. I don't actually use this formula. So let's, uh, let's do this with um, these two points here. 2, 3. And this point here, 4, 17. So I don't really use this formula. I just think what's halfway between 2 and 4? The answer is 3. But let's do it. Let's do it a complicated way. It is at x1. Let's put some of these in. I'm sorry. Let me do this a little slower. x1 and y1. x2, 
y2. So x1 is 2 plus 4. Remember I said halfway between 2 and 4? That's what this is going to give me. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 over 2 is 3. And let's find what the other one. Halfway between 3 and 17. A little harder to do. That's why we actually like the maths. It's 3 plus 17 over 2. A little harder to do in your head if you're thinking halfway. But this is 6 over 2. And this is 20 over 2. So that becomes 3 um, tenth. 3 tenth. And 3 is halfway between 2 and 4. 10 is halfway between 3 and 17. Let's put this one up before I rub it off. And um, 3 and 10 there. Okay, I'll rub this off and we'll do part C. Okay, part C asks us to find the length of the radius of C. So here's C. So what they really want is the length of a, a line from here to the edge of the circle. Any edge of the circle. The problem is I don't know any points on the circle. And none of the points I know are on the circle. So we have to think a little cleverer way to do it. Some students, what you might do is get halfway between here and here. And get this point. That's a good idea. Get the midpoint of this line. And then get the length of that line. That's one good answer. There's an easier, shorter way to do it. I'd like you to notice that the, the diameter here, twice the radius, is a straight line across the middle of the, the square. That means this, uh, di from here to here, is also the diameter. From here to here is also the diameter. From here to here is also the diameter. Let's just find the diameter of this circle using the length formula. So um, we'll, I think we'll use these two points here, minus 4, 11, and um, 2, 3. If we find the length between these two points, we'll get the diameter of this circle. And then we can just half it. Now, the formula for the length is again in our formulas tables. I'll put it on the screen right now. And while you're looking at it, I will jot it down on the, on the whiteboard here. They have it as the length um, between P and Q. I'll simply write it as D. D is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus uh, y1 squared. Okay, so again, you have this formula in your book, so it should be easy to get that. But I don't, I don't really use this either. I, I don't think of um, this formula. I think the distance between the x's, sort of like the, half, the midpoint, but the distance between the x's, Minus 4 and 2, the distance between that is 6. I think of that number. And the distance between 11 and 3 is 8. I think of that number. And you'll see why in a moment. If I use this formula here, let's write this, some of these out here. x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is equal, x2 is 2, minus x1 is minus 4. Notice there's two minuses. One minus was from here, the other minus was with the minus 4. And let's see, this is all squared. Plus y2 is 3 and y1 is 11. That's squared. Let's clean some of this up. This is minus minus 4, which is 2 plus 4. Um, 3 minus 11 is minus 8. Let me put in a square there. I'm sorry, this I, I could have skipped this line. Maybe that's 6 squared plus minus 8 squared. So I said the distance between minus 4 and 2 is 6, and the distance between 11 and 3 is 8. Now this is a minus 8, so it's a little different, but not really, because we're going to square it. And when you square the number, you don't care whether it's a plus or a minus. 8 squared is 64, minus 8 squared is again 64. So that's why I don't need to use this formula. But uh, we did, and it's fine if you want to use the formula as well. Uh, 8 squared, I said, is 64. I'm sorry, 6 squared is 36. This is equal to the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. That's not our answer. That is the length between the edge of the square. Half of that is the radius. So uh, we might just write for the examiner somewhere, radius is equal to 5. So try and remember, radius is equal to 5. Let's put it there. Okay, let, let me rub this out and we'll do part D. Part D asks us to find the equation of this circle here, the equation of the circle. Now again, we'll go back to our formula book, and there's a formula for that. It's on a different page. I'll show you the page now, 
and then I will zoom in on the formula we're going to use. There's actually two options, but this is the one we're going to use. And I'm going to copy that onto the board now. It is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And as you can see from in the book, um, it tells us that h and k are the center of the circle and r is the radius. Okay, so back to, back to just me. Let's fill in some of these things we know. We know what h and k is. We know h and k is 310. That's the center of the circle. We also know what R is. R is, um, R is 5. Let's put that in. R is 5. So for the equation of the circle, it's really just to write it out again. It's just we write all this out again. X, we don't know. An equation needs an X in it. Uh, we keep the X and the Y. They're meant to be there. Minus H. H is just 3 squared plus Y minus uh, K, which is minus 10. Or K is 10. So minus 10 is minus 10. And that's squared equals 5 squared. So here it is here. 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. That's our answer. Don't worry, lots of students multiply this out. That's okay. It's okay if you do it, once you don't make a mistake. But you don't have to. That's why I'd say never do that. Because if you make a mistake multiplying out, they may take a mark. Actually, you know, I don't think they will. They see this line, they'll go correct. And if you do a little extra, they'll probably pretend not to see it. At least I hope they will. They'll pretend not to see it. Once you don't do anything too, too terrible. But if you just try and multiply this out and make a mistake, they'll pretend not to see it. But yeah, you can, you can multiply this out and get um, a different line where it would be something like x squared. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just doing this on the fly. So apologies, uh, minus 6x. And then you would have plus y squared from over here, minus 20y from here. You'd also have a 9 and a 100. Um, so you'd have a, uh, yeah, you'd have 109 minus a 25, which is, I think, 84. So this would be the other way you could write the equation. That's fine as well. There's a different formula. You might have seen it in your formula tables as well that gives it more like this. Um, but honestly, it's a lot messier for this type of question. You need to know which to pick. And in this case, it was this one here. Sorry, I think I rambled on a bit there. I'm not sure I explained that too well. Basically, it says, a, it says equation for a circle in your book. This is it here. You just fill in the things you know. You know what the center is. You know what R is. And you should be fine. If you have any questions about this or any of the rest of the questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out. Thanks for watching and have a good day.